What's up? What's up, divas? And what's up? What's up, divas? It's your girl April. So you guys already know what time it is. It is Real Talk Wednesday, and we are about to dish it out. Talk about it. Just talk about it. So first, before I even get started, we can talk about this. The hair that I am wearing today, I know it is so cute, right? Except for when it gets to the ends. Like, they could at least curl this. So it was not, it is not a unit that I made. It's not even human hair. It's actually Sensational's custom cap wig, which is called Perm Wedge. And I did this a couple of weeks ago. Or well, not even a couple of weeks ago, last week. So make sure you check the video out. I'll link it for you guys below. And also before I get, um, before I forget, um, I also have another video up today as well. So I do two on Wednesdays now. One is beauty related and one is real talk related. And that one is... Um, the two parts, the second part to my um, head wrap tutorial. And then also, um, before y'all be like, bitch, what you chewing on? I love these, okay? So, I will eat this whole bag. This is not the dollar bag. This is like, this is the five dollar bag. Like, the really big bag. Not the, there's another one that's after this. But I really do love these. Um, my daughter got me hooked to those. And, and I know y'all see my nails. So let me just share that with you guys. These are my new Dollar Tree nails. I went to Dollar Tree and racked up, you guys. Seriously racked up. Um, this is not even all of the nails that I have. There are some in a bag because they would not fit in this cute little container. You guys know where I got this container from. It was also from the Dollar Tree, the faux acrylic. Um, I need something way bigger than this. But I did get some really nice matte black nails. Um, what I think is a really great idea is if you get two sets of the same because, I mean, it depends on you as a person. Me, my middle finger is always, like, really wide, so I need to sometimes use, like, the thumbnail or what have you. Or these two, my index and my ring finger, they're almost, like, the same size. So, you know, being that these only come with 12, I get two packs. And if I need to use, then I don't. I mean, I do. If I don't, I don't. I just have an extra pack. But I did get these really cute. Um, from there as well, and I have a 99 cent tr tree, um, 99 cent tree, a uh, 99 cent store and Dollar Tree video as well. Not the, not last week's, but I do have a new one that I will be featuring. So I will show you guys all of these awesome nails that I did get, and I'm so mad because I've seen so many people, well, not so many, but I did see enough people who were. I'm hauling the Kiss nails from Dollar Tree. And this was these are recent videos. So I mean like why can't your girl find them? But either way, here nor there, um, I do like these. These are really, really cute and comfortable. And they're the right length, especially for someone like myself who makes wigs. I find these really like perfect. And um yeah. Now also, um, what was I gonna say? Oh yes. Now, normally, um, I don't do captions or recaps and shit like that for um, TV shows because, for one, I'm just not, like, I don't, I just don't do that shit, okay? That's just not me. I did get a few people that said I should do a reaction video to the season premiere, um, season seven premiere of The Walking Dead, and I did think about it, but then I was like, you know what? When I watch that show, The Walking Dead, it's my time to myself. I don't let anybody around me interfere with me in that television show. And when I'm saying to y'all, I'm being 100% honest. I don't let anybody interfere with me and The Walking Dead. So if you feel like you need to call me, bitch, don't. If you feel the need to text me, I would suggest that you put your fingers back in your pockets and keep them and keep your hands to yourself. If you're thinking of me too hard, please don't, okay? Don't ask me what the fuck happened on the show. Just don't involve yourself with me for those two hours. And when I say two, I'm talking about The Walking Dead and The Talking Dead. Those time frames, please don't bother me. And I would really prefer you not to fuck with me. 30 minutes after and 30 minutes prior because I'm getting 
ready for the show and then I'm getting over the show. So yes, I do need my time and I really, like I said, I thought about it but then I was like, you know what, this is my time to myself and I don't really like reaction videos too much. I just, I just don't. I feel like they're really not I mean, like, I don't really want to sit there and watch your faces. I just don't find the fun and satisfaction out of that. You know what I'm saying? And the way I react to some shows, especially The Walking Dead and the way I reacted this past Sunday, y'all will probably be like, oh, my God, was she fucking Glenn or what? Because it broke my heart. Like, seriously, um, the first time that I ever cried like that, over Glenn was when he and I forget that white guy's name because he was he's just irrelevant. But they were on the dumpster and it looked like Glenn was getting eaten, mauled to death by the walkers when he wasn't. He actually, you know, he escaped. But I was I was heartbroken until somebody reassured me, no, 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 he's alive. And then when I watched The Talking Dead, there was no memorial for him. So then that just like solidified it like, okay, he's good. Okay, but before I could get to all of that, I was, I was crying for like 20 to 30 minutes already. You know, like <laughs> crying. Like, okay. So... That really hurt. I mean, that's not the only time that I've cried from the show. I've cried when Herschel died. You know what I mean? I've cried. There's a lot of times when I have cried over that show. But this past Sunday, it just took a toll on me that I just really cannot explain to you guys. Like, when I watched the show, it hurt. And I was really upset about it. And I made it my business not to go on any social media. Because, you know, I'm three hours time difference. Well, two hours. Three hours. Um, from the East Coast in two hours to some people because Arizona we don't never change our time So some places I'm two hours some places I'm three hours behind either way I, I really didn't want to go on any type of social media because I didn't want it to I didn't want to know who killed who got killed or anything like that even though I would have still watched like when um power was on my friend Shay she would see power before me and I would be like, tell me, tell me. She'd be like, why? Well, just tell me. She's like, you ain't, I'm going to still watch it. And I would still watch it. But for some reason, this I just didn't want to know. Anyway, when he killed Abraham, I was pissed. But I wasn't really hurt. I wasn't hurting like that. Because, you know, first of all, Abraham is cool. He got his, his quotes that will drive you up the wall. But, you know, he wasn't one of my favorite characters because he was only on there for two seasons. So, you know what I'm saying? I really wasn't that attached to him. And plus, the shit that he did to Rosita, ditching her for Sasha, was like, damn, nigga, you really, you giving it up like that? We in this big predicament and you gonna give it up like that and leave me for somebody else? Like, who does that? Especially in the lifestyle they was living. So, I was kind of, like, upset about that. And I was kind of upset about the fact that Sasha, what you gonna fuck with her man for? But you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. So it bothered me, but I felt like, okay, he's a stand-up kind of guy, so that's what's up. But then when this bastard hit Glenn, I had lost it. Like, I, I cried, but I didn't cry as bad as when I thought Glenn got killed the first time with the, um, with the walkers. But it hurt me. It hurt me. And I, I was more angry. I was really angry is what I was. I was angry and I was hurt. But when it really hurt and touched me was when I was watching The Talking Dead and Glenn came out, Stephen Young came out, and they did their tribute to him, his memorial. I sat on the edge of that bed and I broke down like I had just lost a family member. Like, I was so hurt and it hurt me so bad. And then Mumsy, my nine-year-old, she came behind me and sat next to me. And she just started rubbing me and brought me this box of Kleenex. Okay? Like, I was that I was that messed up. Like, really, really messed up. And a lot of things that I see um, people writing about on social media. Like, okay, I get it. You might have missed the episode or whatever. Or, But, bitch, please don't leave no fucking messages or... Don't write on my shit and my tributes to The Walking Dead. Well, who killed Glenn? Glenn is dead. I love Glenn. How the fuck you gonna love somebody and say you're a Walking Dead fan when bitch you don't even know who killed them? Like, you fake. You are you are a fake fan. So that's the type of shit I don't like. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't like shit like that. And I know I'm probably taking it real personal because I really am. You know what I'm saying? I have watched each season about 20 times, okay? No lie, no exaggeration. I will watch that same episode until the next episode comes back on 
on the following Sunday. So I might watch it twice or three times a day for six days straight. That's just what I do. But for this episode, I couldn't I could not rewatch season seven, episode one, the season premiere oh, again. One time was enough for me. Like I can't I really cannot watch that again. And that is my ritual, my routine to watch and rewatch. My kids will tell you all she do is keep watching the same shit over and over again. I just couldn't bring my turn myself to terms to to watch that and and the part of me is like okay maybe rick was dreaming and this is all a nightmare and he gonna wake up and everybody's gonna be there no bitch um glenn's ass is gone you see in the memorial get over it but the thing that really pissed me off and walking dead amc if you watching this how the fuck you gonna bring negan up on the stage panel with the rest of the crew from the walking dead after on the Talking Dead show after he done did them like that. Like, I'm sorry. There were over 2,000 people at the Talking Dead show in L.A. And they were sitting outside. And I wish I could have been one of those people sitting out there. Okay? Because a bitch like me probably would have got security calls on her and been arrested. Because I wish I would have been sitting out there amongst all those people. And this motherfucking Negan then came up on the stage at the end talking about he had to do it or shit like that. You know, I bet you would have got up. I would have probably been like, fuck you, Negan. You gonna get yours. I'm like really taking this to heart because I guarantee you, Negan gonna get his. Okay? Whether it be Rick, Michonne, Ma uh, Maggie, or whoever. Or a bitch like April. Trust and believe. Rick, uh, the crew, Negan, we all gonna gang up on Negan ass, okay? He got to go. He got to go. I am I am waiting for my day to be cast member. Not even cast member. But just let me get the opportunity to be a walker. You can cut my motherfucking head off. I don't give a fuck. But I just, I just want one chance to meet any one of them. And I'm good. That is my life. Not my life goal, but that is one of my, that's on my bucket list, okay? Seriously, that is on my bucket list, to be a part of The Walking Dead, just to, just, just to meet them. And you know what's really cool about it, though? They have this other show, Outcast, um, which is on Cinemax, and it's by the producers of The Walking Dead. So... I did get a lot of memorabilia from the show Outcast um, prior, before it even aired. Um, it had a lot to do with my tweets and things like that and Instagram posts. Um, that's just something that I like to do. And they emailed me and they said to me basically that they seen that I really enjoyed the show and they wanted to send me some stuff. Why did a bitch think it was some stuff from The Walking Dead? They sent me this huge box, and in the huge box was this VCR and this VCR tape. I thought it was a joke. I was not going to plug it in because I thought my house was going to blow up. Long story short, I ended up plugging it in like a couple weeks later. Long and behold, it was the actual season of Outcast before it even aired. So the reason for this VHS tape was so that I couldn't copy it and let anybody else see it. But it's a really good show. Um, the producers are really great at that, but... Um, the Walking Dead is still my number one, and I do I do like Fear of the Walking Dead now, too. So I'm waiting patiently for that to come back on, but nobody could ever take Glenn's place. So I just wanted to put that out there to you guys, because that right there was my show. And I wish y'all bitches, and y'all know who y'all are, will stop asking dumbass questions about The Walking Dead if you call yourself a fan. If you call yourself a fan, bitch, your ass should have been sitting in front of that motherfucking TV at 8.55 p.m. Whether you East or West Coast, it comes on at 9. Bitch, be in front of the motherfucker at 8.55, ready to watch that shit. Snacks or no. So that way we can tell if you're a real motherfucking diehard fan or not. Okay? All right, dumbass? Who said that one? So on that note... Let's get into this real talk because I know I have talked you guys to death about my favorite TV show and shit like that. But you know what? It is what it is. So let's get it on. Okay, so before I even get started, if you want to real talk about your stuff, go ahead and send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Make sure to put in the subject line of that email, real talk. And if you would like to change the names of your characters in the email, meaning the people that you are talking about, then you can go ahead and do so and just let me know. So other than that, let's get on with this real talk, y'all. 
Okay, so hi April. I have already changed the names and I'm going to jump right into it. My name is Sunshine and I'm a 23-year-old 23, 23 mom of one. Me and my child's father are engaged to be married and working on paying off my debts before moving in together and getting our own home. My mom, we, we will call her Kay, hasn't been the best parent. But I've always tried to love her and have a good relationship with her. My mom had me when she was young and had no idea on how to be a mother. I have memories of my mom dropping me off with family members for days at a time and not even calling to check on me. Forgetting to pick me up from after school care because she was out of town with her boyfriend. And just always choosing men and other things over me. I always felt like a burden and that she didn't love me. Despite all of that, I had my father who was amazing. He was very active in my life and made sure that I had everything I needed and wanted. Fast forward to high school. My mom is finally settling down and becoming more involved in my life. As a sophomore in college, I met my child's father and that's when everything takes a turn for the worse. Before meeting him, if I wasn't shopping or in school, I would be home. Of course, I would hang out with friends or occasionally go on dates, but I would never go clubbing or just live life like normal young adults. When I met my child's father, I started going out more and spending more time with him and his family which was fine considering me and my family never really spent time together well my mom started getting jealous and felt as though I was being taken away from her which was not the case after graduating college I found out I was pregnant me and my boyfriend had plans to move out but things happened and we ended up not being able to fast forward to a few weeks ago there's been a lot of tension between me and my mom I work full-time and my daughter goes to daycare every day when I'm not working I always have my daughter I'm the complete opposite of my mom and she sees that so we got into a heated argument and she called me unfit and said the only thing I I do is buy my daughter clothes and shoes now there's a lot that I can deal with but calling me a bad mother is not one of them I told her ass I was a better mother than she has ever been which was harsh but it's true ever since then there's been nothing but tension my dad has no contact with her because she acts like a complete asshole and is disrespectful towards him and for whatever reason he randomly puts money in my bank account and told me to give her one hundred dollars when I finally got a chance to talk to him and I told him about all the things she had been saying to me and how she drinks beer all the time and he told me to keep um, to keep it not, not, with to keep it with her money is everything now she watches my daughter Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday for three hours and Saturday for ten hours until I get off of work. When I first told her about my schedule, she said it was fine. Now every time she gets mad, she wants to throw it up in my face that I need to pay her or find a daycare to watch her own grandchild. Little does she know I'm in the process of changing my schedule so that I can take my daughter to and from daycare and I will only need a sitter on Saturday, which I might allow someone from her dad's side to watch her. I know she's going to have a fit when she finds out, but I don't give a fuck anymore. She thinks I'm using her, which is the furthest from the truth. If I were to let someone else watch my daughter, she would die. Now, I could understand if I was out club hopping and partying, but I'm working to take care of my child. And that's really all that you can think about. I told her she's disrespectful to me as a daughter and woman, therefore I refuse to do anything for her. I'm at the point where I'm making the conscious decision to not have any contact with her once I move out and just limit the conversation while I'm still here. My stepdad wants us to stay here as long as we need to so that we'll be financially stable once we do leave. My mom is the only person with the issue. My question to you is, should I just stay here and take care of my debt or just leave and deal with the debt later? And am I wrong for not wanting to have a relationship with her? I don't want my child growing up seeing all this conflict and disrespect and thinking it's normal. I just want to be at peace and away from the drama. Thanks in advance. Sunshine. Girl, first of all, let me tell you. Ooh, this hair is hot on my neck, okay? Let me tell you, Sunshine. You know, I know you guys all know. While my daughter Tati is at work, I, will, I take care of my grandson. I don't feel like, as a grandparent, we need to get paid for watching our grandchildren. I mean, if that's what you want to do as the mother of the child, is give that money to the grandparent, then hey, that's your business. But I would never once, never ask none of my kids, you got to pay me to watch my grandkids. I don't even really consider it watching my grandson, you know what I'm saying, because I'm not his babysitter. 
And I was kind of offended by someone who said that to me. Well, you the babysitter. I'm not a fucking babysitter. I'm his grandmother. And if I'm home and he's home, we together because we family. That's what the fuck it's called, family. And family sticks together. So I don't really feel like you should charge your kid to watch your grandchild. Like, who does that? However, here's the thing about your mama, girlfriend. Now, as for y'all not having the best relationship and you being in debt, sometimes you just got to step outside the box and step into the real world and do shit on your own and just be done with certain people in your life. And I'm going to use this that just passed, um, happened to me this past last week, which was on a Friday, as an example, okay? So I'm at the doctor's office and my daughters, my three daughters are with me, okay? And, um... I'm there to get my knee checked out. You know, it was, it was either Wednesday or Thursday, whatever day I had to go last week to get my knee checked out. I went. So I think it was on a Wednesday. So, because I did tell you guys about it. So I think it was on a Wednesday. Anyway, as I'm sitting there, you know, I have not spoken to my own biological mom since May. Now, mind you, she tried to text me in May and just to say Happy Mother's Day. But I don't really think that you should text anybody, especially if that's your daughter or your mother, Happy Mother's Day. So I called her, you know what I'm saying? We had a conversation. She was sleeping, like always. Every time I call her, she's either too busy to talk to me or she's taking a nap. And as your child, if you keep telling me this, like a good eight after eight times, I'm going to limit my time of talking to you. Especially if you're telling me, well, I'm busy right now. I'm busy right now. And in being that you're busy, you'll talk to me about what's been going on in your life, what you and your friends have been doing. And then when it's my turn to converse back and say what's going on with my life and with my kids, your, which is your grandkids, you feel the need to be like, you know what, I'm busy. I have to go. Okay, so I just spent 10, 15 minutes listening to everything you dished out to me about what you've been doing, how y'all been hanging out or whatever, but then now you too busy to, to listen to me? Okay, Pamela, because that's my mom's name. That's fine. I let that go for a good 10 times, you know what I'm saying? And we had not spoken to each other since May, okay? So it's October now. So that's what, June, July, September. June, July, August, September, October, five months ago. So... On my birthday in June, she didn't call me. She didn't. She texts me the next day. Oh, I forgot about your birthday. Happy birthday. All I said was thanks because, wow, you forgot about me on my birthday. But when your birthday was passed a few months ago in February, a bitch like me didn't forget. I called you, sent you a card, and a gift and money inside that card. So, wow. Okay, but whatever. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't, I don't, I'm not petty like that. And I just left it alone. But I did say to myself, I'm not going to call her because the phone works both ways. And I'm not going to be the one to constantly call and also be the one to constantly be told I'm busy or I'm sleeping. On holidays, Christmas, mother, every time I call her, she's sleeping. So really, you have a job. I don't really think you're sleeping, but it's either here nor there. So anyway, last week, I took the initiative to call her because it was five months and I was concerned. I hadn't heard from her. She didn't answer her phone, so I kind of took it as she's probably at work. Um, so, I, a couple hours go by, and I'm sitting inside the, the room waiting for the, um, the nurse to come in to draw my blood. And I had already been seen by the doctor. He's sending me downstairs to get x-rays, yada, yada, yada. This nice black lady comes in. She's a nurse. We're talking. My mother calls. Hey, Mommy. Oh, what are you doing? Where are you at? I'm at the doctor's office. Oh, you're pregnant again, huh? I was like, okay, first of all, I'm not pregnant. Second of all, I think I would need a man to get pregnant. And wow, I got five kids and I'm a grandmother. Why would I want any more kids? Long story short, she asked me what I was doing there. I said, for one, I'm here for my knee because my knee has been killing me for the past months and I'm losing sleep. I haven't been sleeping in over a week. And also, they're checking my thyroid because I have been working out for five, six weeks now, and I, there's no weight loss, but a pound or two. And that's really, like, a, a little bit weird being that I was doing really well prior to working out. So, she was like, oh, well, how much do you weigh? So, I told her how much I weigh, which is 216 pounds. It was 216 pounds. Oh, wow, you're a big one. I said, what? You, you're fat. You're a big one. I said, you know what? You're really rude. You are really, really rude. We're going back and forth. You know, basically, I'm telling her, you, she's, I said, she's, she said, well, you don't call me. I called you enough times like I told her, but you don't even bother to answer. Back and forth, back and forth. This is what she said to me. 
Well, you know what, April? That's why you don't have any friends and nobody likes you because you always have an attitude. I said, first of all, what makes you think that I don't have friends? You think those people that watch you on the internet are your friends. They're not. They don't even like you. I said, first of all, nobody ever thought they were my friends. I don't know what you're talking about. Second of all, who ever told you I didn't have friends? Third of all, I'm 42 years old. I don't think I need to be surrounding myself with a crowd of friends when I got bills to pay and things to take care of and kids to take care of and look after and grandkids, okay? I said, I don't have an attitude. I said, but when people call me up and then they talk about I'm, I'm a big one and I'm fat, what do you expect? You know what? I'm going to let you go now. I said, you know what? Bye. Fuck you. And hung up. And I really did not want to say fuck you to her. But it had got me to the point where you're not about to keep disrespecting me, okay? I'm 42 years old. I think I deserve respect just as much as you. And how dare you say that I'm a big one? First of all, I'm far from big. I'm taller than my mom. She tried to say when she was 200 pounds, she was big. You and I have different body shapes. So we have different, our bodies are proportioned a whole lot different. And also, you like four feet and some change. I'm 5'3". I might not be that tall. But a bitch is taller than you. So my weight is a little bit different. And my weight is more more or less in my ass and I have a pouch right here and my hips I'm not a, I don't really give a fuck if I am a big one it's the whole point is don't be disrespectful like that so you know what I called my dad who my dad is an amazing person sunshine and he's always there for me our relationship may not have been that great in the beginning and it had a lot to do with my mom and how she would bash him but I, I started seeing things as I got older of where the wrong really came from. And as much as I love my mom and I would love to have a great relationship with her, sometimes you have to distance yourself from people, okay? You literally have to distance yourself regardless of who they are to you. And it may hurt a little bit more because that's your biological mother, the one that gave birth to you. But just because they're your biological mother does not always mean that they have good intended for you, okay? Bottom line, I have heard so many things in my life growing up as a teenager from my own mother at the age of 14, how she would say to me, I look better than you. First of all, I'm not really sure what parent goes around comparing themselves to their daughters or even saying that they look better than their kids, especially um, if their daughter is of a teenager, 14. I don't really think that those things are nice things to say to your kids. You know, or call me a bitch, or a slut, or a trend, all kind of things. We've had so many issues with each other, you know what I mean? And I don't know if it's because my mom's mom, or her mother died when she was, I think she was either 10 or 12. Um, I don't know if that's the case, but either way... I would expect you to be a human being because I'm not your only daughter. My sister is, I'm, 30, I'm 42, my sister is 30. She lives with you. You treated her so much better than you treated me as a kid. But I'm not going to compare the two because maybe by then you had a little bit of life lesson as being a parent. However, you still don't have a life lesson as being a human being. And my kids, I have five kids. And out of five of my kids, four of them always say, I don't think she likes us because she'll never ask about us. She don't never call us. She don't even know our names. And it's bad when my children, your grandchildren, can feel like you don't like them as a person because of the way you treat them. I don't diss my mom in front of my kids. I don't bash her. But it's the things that she does that they're able to see and put together that really bother them. So they stay away from her and they, they, they more or less just deal with my dad. You know what I mean? And my dad's wife, which is their grandmother. She's by, she is their step-grandmother, but they don't even call her that. They just call her grandma. You know what I'm saying? And I know I said this in many um, real talks before about my stepmom, but Norma is an amazing woman. And I love her to death. And she is, let's see, there was Betty, there was Sandy. She's wife number four, because my mom was the first. And Betty, um, that was my first stepmother. And then Sandy, who was my second stepmother, the white lady, she's cool. We, we're really, really close. And she still calls me to this day. But I really don't talk to her as much. I kind of like cut her off because I'm not going to sit here and let you talk shit about my dad when you cheat on him with white trash. Like, we don't do that. We're not about to do that. And you don't really know me as that type of person. But I'm glad that my dad actually found Norma because she is like the best person in the world.
with a little Philippine lady and she's just amazing and she makes my dad so happy and I'm happy for him you know what I mean but the whole moral of this story is basically sunshine you picked the perfect name because at the end of that rainbow or at the end of that storm it's always some sunshine and no that might be yeah that's your mom and that's your daughter's grandmother sometimes you just gotta walk away from the situation because Toxic shit can really get to you and it can feed on you and your kids. And just like how my kids feel about my mother, you don't want your daughter to feel that way. You know what I'm saying? You don't want her to see that that's what goes on because of you living there in the household. It's one thing to be having some type of tension around a person when you're around them but if you have to live in the same household that's like a really uncomfortable feeling and when it's so much tension like that you don't know when shit is about to pop off so me personally if I were you I would honestly move the fuck out everybody has debt I mean and maybe some people don't have debt Bless their souls if they fucking don't. But you know what? Debt is a part of life. And how are we going to learn to be grown-ups if we don't get out there and do shit on our own? You know what I'm saying? You're going to pay that debt off and you're going to have some other debt right behind that. Nine times out of ten. And it's like that when it's families that have young kids and are young too. You know what I'm saying? We are just making it families. That's what we can call ourselves. Just making it families. And we are always going to accumulate some debt. But just try to pay your bills on time so that way you can get over that hurdle. But more or less, time to move out. Because you don't need to be in an uncomfortable situation where somebody feel like you need, you need them. It's always good and it's a blessing to have a family member around, you know what I'm saying, that can help you out. But when you have that family member that's throwing that shit up in your face constantly, constantly, like, oh... I'm not going to do this or, oh, you better you better pay me or take your kid to daycare. Then I, me personally, I don't want my kid around that person. If you really feel like I need to take my child to daycare, bitch, you ain't got to say that shit again, okay? Because I will not bring my child the fuck around your blasphemy ass, okay? So me, if I were you, I would move out. You know what I'm saying? Save up your coins and move the fuck out. If you guys got money saved up now... Move out. Debt is always going to follow you. <laughs> it is what it is. It's called debt. It's, it really should be called fucking life. But don't let that stop you and be put in an uncomfortable situation. You guys got your own family and that's cool. And if you and your, your soon-to-be husband are going to have daycare for your daughter, put her in daycare. Not, you know what? Sometimes it's good for her to be in daycare. Because, for one, she gets to be around a bunch of other little people her age, and she gets to converse and communicate with those little people of her age. It's not always cool for somebody to be around someone older, especially if they're drinking beer all day, you know what I'm saying? So what is she really teaching that little girl? You know what I mean? And if you hateful toward them like that, because I'm finding it to be hateful, because if you can say, oh, you better pay me, or oh, you better take her to daycare, that makes me feel like you don't really care for my kid. And if that's the case, I don't really want you around her like that. So, your best bet is to put her in daycare and let her be around little people. You know, I call them little people because they little people and they got their own little thing going on and she'll be just fine. And then you'll also be just fine. And you'll be in your own environment and fuck away from that. And just leave her alone. You ain't got to deb your mom. But what you do need to do is leave her the fuck alone and do you, sweetheart. You grown. You don't need her acceptance and you don't need her permission for anything. You're grown. And what grown people do, we get our own shit. Okay? So let Sunshine know what y'all would do in the situation. Okay, so for number two. Now, I did tell you guys, like I was saying, I went to the knee doctor and I had to get an x-ray. So Friday is when I actually found out about my knee. What was the prognosis? A bitch is getting old, okay? So... <sighs> This was kind of a hard one to fathom, but you know what? It's not, I don't, I don't really know if it's with old age. It just has to do with sometimes our cartilage. But so the cartilage is gone basically in both my knees. And it has a lot to do with just like running track from back in the days. And just a lot of shit that I would do. And um, so, yeah. Did they tell me that I have mild arthritis in my knees? I was like, are you serious? My left one does not hurt. But my right one, I was like, oh my God, if this is mild, I do not want to know what fucking severe feels like because a bitch would be dying. 
I like literally get, I can't sleep. I'll sleep like two, three hours for the past week and a half now. And I'll wake up in tears because it's so painful. So I'm trying, um, tomorrow I'm supposed to get some new medication because I went back. Because you gave me something for my knee that wasn't even for my knee. You know what I mean? So I, I, last night I went and I got some Bayer. Just from watching the commercials, you know, Bayer, Bayer, B-A-Y-E-R. And it worked a tiny bit, you know what I mean? It worked a little bit. I was able to get more sleep than normal. But, yeah, so, um, I have arthritis in my knee. And on top of that, you know, I am going for surgery on the 11th of November for my lady parts to be going. Nah, y'all gonna be like, bitches, you, trans um, you transforming over to... I am getting, um... A hysterectomy but I'm gonna get an ablation so they don't have to take it out they're going to burn them so that way I won't have a period anymore and um, and things like that because because of because of my period it's so bad and I'm not gonna get into detail I'm anemic severely anemic now um, from what I was told from the doctor so on the 11th I go I can either have the ablation or I can have a full hysterectomy and that's like a three week period three to four week healing process of not being able to do anything and I'm so busy and I really can't afford that and on top of that like you can't lift anything and I can't be in this household and my grandson running around and, and I can't pick him up he'll have a fit so I just figured I would just get the easier route because I really don't want to be laid up for three to four weeks you know what I mean so I got that and yeah and then I have to go see a vascular surgeon because um, I do have horrible veins um, in my legs and that has a lot to do with why my feet have been swelling for the past months every night so yes yeah. so I'm like falling all the fuck apart here like but other than that, I'm happy that I woke up, okay? I'm happy that I woke up. My knee is in, pain, in plain pain right now. But I'm happy that I woke up because there are people that are going through a lot worse than me. And I'm thankful to God that he looks after me and he gets me through and he helps me and he can help me provide for me and my kids. So everything and every day to me is a blessing. Bottom line. Okay, so. Real talk, not ready for a relationship. Bitch, I feel you. Names already changed. If you're reading this and responding, I want to thank you for taking the time out to do so. You are one of the realest on YouTube, and I get a kick out of your videos because of your honesty. Let's keep this short and simple. You can call me Toya. I'm 23 years old, and I just started dating this guy about two months ago. You can call him Levi. Levi is 36 years old. Okay, so Levi is 13 years old on her. Levi is 36 years old. His rap sheet, I'm guessing, isn't the best in better words. Has been. Um, has been. He has been a dog. <laughs> he has been a dog all his life. I mean, I met him. I met him one day. We went on a few dates. And we've been hanging with and staying with each other every single day since. Everything has been going great between us. Our vibe we share is perfect. A month into our situation, he told me, you're my girlfriend now. I know you don't want anybody else. I was hesitant, but I agree because it was the truth. I didn't want to be with anybody else. Of course, spending so much time with one another, our feelings, or at least my feelings, has gotten and is getting stronger. It's now been two months or a little over two months and he's saying things like, I'm scared, I'm going to hurt you, we should move slower, I've never been committed before, I don't want to hurt you. April. Now I'm confused and I don't know what this really means. He has assured me he likes me a lot and I know he is trying to get back financially stable for himself, his daughter, and me as well, so he says. I don't know if a relationship is scaring him right now or what. Should I just cut things off with him and keep it moving? Thank you, April, for your time. I hope to get a response from you. So first of all, let me just tell you, Toy, I do apologize that you did write this to me, um, like, in the end of September. Um, but let me tell you, first of all, y'all only been dating two months when you wrote this, so now it's three months. Two months. I don't know what a lot of people always trying to rush shit for, but two months is not a long time. And yeah, you should take it a little bit slower. Um, two months is like really not long at all. So I wouldn't be rushing into no shit like that. Um, especially, listen, he's 13 years older than you. He's 36 years old. You already said he was a dog and his rap sheet ain't the best, etc., etc. 
and y'all been dating for two months and he says he likes you a lot but he doesn't want to hurt you and he feels like y'all should take it slower take it from his point of view and do this just that the world is not coming to an end tomorrow he's 13 years old than you and like you said he's a dog and he's been a dog all his life so why would you really want to pursue and rush anything with somebody who has been a dog all his life and I know when you mean a dog he ain't um, had all fours and a tail and just turned into a human being I'm pretty sure as a woman we all know what the fuck you mean as he was a dog. Me personally, I would investigate that nigga to the end of time. Because for real, I don't trust you. Yeah, people do change. That's nice. What we do for them. However, yeah, we got to give people the benefit of the doubt. But if a nigga telling you, like, let's just go a little bit slower. I think we're moving a little bit too fast. I don't want to rush things. I like you a lot, but I don't want to hurt you. Can we take it slow? Nigga, we're going to take it slow because I don't know what the fuck you up to. And we would have been took it slow from the get-go. Yes, people do start catching feelings for each other when they with each other every day, all day, all the time. But bitch, don't believe everything a nigga tell you neither. Like, oh, he's trying to get financially stable for you, for himself, his daughter, and also for you. He don't even know you like that to be wanting to get financially stable with you like that. Second of all, dos, number of dos, he was a dog all his life. It's two months. There is a whole lot that can go on in two months. And there's a whole lot that your black ass just do not know in two motherfucking months. Right or wrong? Hello. Right. Okay. So, with that being said, lady, I would take it slow. You you know what I'm saying? Because it's basically from what I'm gathering from this email. Should I just cut it off with him because you cuz he wants to take it slow? No, bitch. Take it slow, because if you take it fast, that nigga gonna walk all over you, and you ain't gonna know what the fuck hit your ass. And you gonna, your head gonna be spilling, spinning like that bitch from the exorcist, so if I were you, that shit would be slow like a sloth, you know, the motherfucking sloth, turtle, tortoise, whatever the fuck you want to use as an example, as being slow. Take that shit slow, because then you can investigate a nigga and really find out who the fuck he is. You ain't got to cut it off just like that. But just watch your back and don't try to cut it off because he said take it slow. And he he may just be concerned about your feelings because like he said, he's never been in a committed relationship before. That right there goes to tell you the nigga's 36 and you got kids, you ain't never been in a committed relationship before. Nigga. I'm just saying. Just chill. Just chill with the nigga and let him take that shit slow. And you know what I'm saying? Just ride it out. Ride that shit the fuck out. So this is going to be the last one. This one also is a short one. Hi, Diva April. For the purpose of this real talk, real talk topic, you can refer to me as Jade. Here is a situation at hand. I am a 30-year-old single female, child, childless, and have never been married or in a serious relationship that has lasted. I have my degree and I work hard. I have my shit together and I live independently on my own. I am currently dating a 35-year-old man um, who has minim minimal labor a, min a minimal labor paying job around nine dollars an hour. He has six kids and four baby mothers. We have only been dating for seven months. His past is that of a ghetto sad story. From drug dealing, serving jail time, bad credit, financial issues, numerous court issues, and the list possibly continues. He is not the usual man that I would go for, but I figured since I'm getting older and it seems like he is looking to settle down that I should just give it a try. As of lately, it has been hell. We hardly see each other because he has to be around his kids and we have not had any alone or intimate time for over two months. I am not sure if he is trying to stay with me just because I am always helping him to achieve better things or in it for love. It is wearing me thin and I'm not sure which way to go. What would be your best advice for a young woman in my situation? Bitch, run. Okay? Bitch, motherfucking run. 
I'm saying. Now, first of all, you 30 years old. You ain't got no no kids, but you dating a 35 year old man who makes um, nine dollars an hour. He has six kids, four baby mothers. Been in jail, selling drugs, financial issues, court issues, and just basically a ghetto sad story. I like the title of that, a ghetto sad story. I think that's what I'm gonna call this video, a ghetto sad story for real. Um, and on top of that, it's been hell because y'all have not been able to spend no intimate time with each other in over two months because he always got to be around his kids. Bitch, he got six of them. What the fuck you expect? Okay? They're not all up in one house group together, so they are all spread out with four different baby mothers. So, yes, he has to spread the love out because he's already done spread the love and gave it up. So, yes, he ain't got time for your ass. And really, just because you in your 30s and you feel like, okay, you <laughs> You haven't had a serious, committed relationship. Now it's your time to settle for less. Look, I'm sorry, but then that would just be like me saying the same thing. Oh, I should just stay with that motherfucking drunk nigga that I was married to because I'm in my 30s, because I was in 30s at the time, and now I'm in my 40s, and, you know, nobody's going to want me, so let me just stay. I'm not about to settle for less from nobody. I'm sorry. And I'm not going to say that I'm better than or that I'm bougie and that I don't think that I need to be with anybody because they only make $9 an hour. It's not about the money that you make, but it's about the person and the character you are, okay? And if you feel like you have to settle down because he sees Seems like he wants to. That's because, bitch, he is 35 years old. He ain't got really much going for his fucking self. So, yeah, maybe he do have time now to settle down because he done ran himself in the motherfucking ground. Okay? That nigga need to settle down now after he done been in and out of jail and everything the fuck else. Shit. What the fuck you think? But what I won't do is settle for nothing. Because that's what it feels like you're doing. You're just settling for this nigga because you ain't got no other prospects. Let me tell you something, sweetheart. If you continue to be with this one, you ain't going to have no other prospects. And you're going to let Mr. Right, the one that is made for you, simply just float on by. Because you're not going to notice him because you're with the one that you settled for less. Okay? This is not famous footwear and pay less shoe source. Okay, because I'm sorry, me, a bitch like me, I would go to Famous Footwear before I would um, pay less shoe source. Because I don't want to pay less and get lower grade. This thing is kind of like lower grade. And I never, ever judge people. Well, maybe I do judge people sometimes. However, in your situation, it just seems like you just want to settle because you want to be in a relationship with somebody. But... You are complaining about his hours, his money, his um, less um, time spending with you, his four baby mama dramas, and every other thing. Let me tell you something. I am one who has kids, okay? But I don't really, I would, I don't think I would want to date somebody that has kids, especially if they're young, because I've already dealt with that. And they are really into their kids. And I can co totally relate to that because I am into my kids. However, I do know when to put my time and my kid time at a stand. You know what I'm saying? I know how to balance the two. And as a 30-year-old woman who doesn't have children, but maybe you want some, and you got your shit together, maybe you need to find someone that is more or less got their shit together and maybe would like a family with you. Because I don't think this nigga needs any more kids, and I don't think he wants a family with you. And also, if he did want a family with you, meaning he wanted to impregnate your ass, bitch, I would run, and I wouldn't want him to impregnate me. Okay? Because now you got baby number seven, and how much child support you getting? You're not really going to get that much because they do have to divide it up. So, I'm sorry. Life goes on. Bitch, fucking run. And don't think twice. So, on that note, let these young ladies know what you would do in their situation. I know I have talked to you guys ears as well. So, I will see you in a soon-to-come video. Stay diva and divalicious. And I love you guys. Mm -hmm.